question comes from Kelsey. Kelsey writes, My horse and I have been practicing with the barrels lately, and I was wondering if our times would be better if I went really close to the barrel, which is how we've been practicing. The thing about that is that his speed slows down as soon as we get to the barrel, so I was wondering if I should work on curving out more on the barrel, but I'm afraid it would cost us more time, but then again, my horse can go faster the wider we go. Thanks for your question, Kelsey. There are wide and varied opinions of exactly where a horse's feet should fall when traveling around the paddock. If we were to study the exact footfall of the world's top horses, we'd find that each of them would vary slightly. So although I'm hesitant to describe a certain way as the only way, I do have a certain track that I follow around the barrels, and as you determine what works best for you and your horses, keep in mind that there are some basic foundational concepts that apply across the board, and I'll be sharing all of that in this video. To start with, I'll explain that the path you've trained your horse's feet to follow in the pattern can make or break your run. Basically, the way we travel to a barrel is often how we'll turn a barrel, and how you enter a turn determines how you exit a turn. So it's very important when troubleshooting to look at what happened before what happened happened. Horses need enough room so their big bodies can get through the turns, but covering too much real estate can create slower times and sometimes actually make it tempting for a horse to drop into a barrel because there's such a huge space there to do so. The angle that we approach the barrel and how much room we allow for the turns to take place can either make it physically more difficult for our horses to perform efficiently or it can make it easier. When barrel races are won and lost by tiny fractions of a second, we'd be wise to be very particular about where our horses place their feet. After all, there's not much wiggle room between a couple hundredths of a second. So it makes sense that in all areas of barrel horse training, we need to be very precise and pay attention to the subtlest details. So if you're interested in making sure that the football pattern you ask your horse to follow is giving you the best opportunity to make smoke and fast runs, it's worthwhile to take a closer look at exactly where your horse's feet are. In this example, I'll be describing this going to the left, but this all applies no matter which barrel you go to first. When I placed a marker 10 feet straight out from the first barrel, which is the general area considered by many to be the rate and shape point, as well as a point to cross over on the way to the second barrel, I realized several things. I realized that I had been cutting in a little too close, which may explain why my horse sometimes struggled with getting ready for that first barrel turn. And again, we go to the left barrel first. I also realized that placing that marker at 12 feet seemed to feel more suitable for my current horse although I may adjust that rate and shape point slightly in a run depending on the conditions. In addition, I noticed that I was missing that cross and traveling to the outside of the marker on the way to the second barrel. It was a subtle thing, but it could compromise my position for that next turn. By making an adjustment to make sure I cross that point, I'm being proactive and preparing my horse well in advance to be in good shape for that second barrel. When I placed markers on the path I take around the barrels, they measured out to be at approximately four feet from the barrel coming into the turn, then six feet from the barrel on the back side, and then three feet as I exit. This type of turn allows my horse to travel as long as possible in a straight line, and we all know that is the fastest way between two points. Doing this doesn't mean my horse has a rollback or a slingshot style, but it allows enough room for my horse to keep his momentum and clear his body for a fast turn and a powerful straight shot to the next barrel. In the video you'll see that we place some flour on the ground to really get and show you a vision of this pattern and how my horse honors it no matter what speed. We did make the mistake of making the line too straight at the start of the turn there which is why you see me not actually staying on track in that spot. It's my policy though to stay on this track in slow or fast work, with the only exception being that I'm trying to troubleshoot an issue that's developed on the pattern. Basically, unless my horse is anticipating or I'm trying to fix some kind of a problem, I don't vary off this path. If you're a beginner barrel racer, you may find yourself wanting to look at the barrel to ensure you're the proper distance from it. But as you progress, make it your goal to depend more on feel and your peripheral vision for positioning your horse around the barrel. 
I encourage you to get a hold of some of these cool soccer field markers, which you can find online, as well as a bag of flour, a tape measure, and even a video camera, and take a closer look at exactly where your horse's feet are falling in slow work, as well as really studying those tracks after making a run. The path our horse's feet fall in the pattern can tell us a lot, but only if we pay attention to and study where their feet are. Getting really clear about the exact footfall you want your horse to travel around the barrels is so important. Marking out your points on the pattern, walking it on foot, and then following that pattern on your horse in slow work and then in a practice run will just help you get a clearer picture in your mind about where you want your horse to be. Our horses will only really develop confidence in where he places his feet when we have done everything we possibly can, both physically and mentally, to memorize the path and the points we want to go ourselves. When you're completely certain of the footfall pattern you want your horse to follow, then consistently require him to stay on track. It will build your horse's confidence. Often this kind of clarity can help resolve timing issues and problems with going by a barrel or even ch children in a turn. So in closing, let's review some of the main points from this week's Q&A video. So Kelsey, it doesn't matter if you've been running barrels your whole life and you're on a seasoned horse or if you're just getting started. You and your horse will benefit from measuring and precisely defining your chosen path and sticking to it. So what do you think? Are you ready to go out and get some flour and a tape measure and mark your pattern? What helps you and your horse stay on track? Share your insights in the comments below. I love hearing from you.